We're going up the zoo pit, we're going up the zoo pit. <laughs> Are you a little bit hyped? Yeah. I'm hyped. Highest mountain in Germany. For yeah. a second time. I'm going to take you up a mountain. A big yeah. mountain up there. Up there? <laughs> and it's exciting. So today, going back up the zoo pit. So I was there the other day. I did the longer route today. We are catching the Erwald Arm uh, cable car and then we'll walk up the Gatel route. Should be about six hours or so. Hopefully, we will survive. <laughs> yep. We have to get. To get, to get. Hey. <laughs> Why is it so noisy? It's because a jackhammer. <laughs> Come up the mountain with me? Yes, please. Wait, who is coming up with you? <laughs> you, with me. Oh, okay, then you're leading the way today. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. Okay, so we're catching the cable car up to here, and then we're gonna head up to uh, this house, and then up to this place at 1900. And then basically we're gonna head up again. Obviously a lot of up already the whole way. Uh, and this is where I think it's gonna be interesting. The little dots mean like proper mountain path. I think this is probably gonna be quite steep and sketchy, but we'll see. And then it goes around um, and around and around. And we get up to oh, Knohote there. And I was there on my other route. And then Son Alpine. So we'll see how we're doing for time. Cause this last cable car is at like 4.30. So, so long as we're here by two, we should be fine. If we're later, then we'll get the Son Alpine up and then we'll head down, because this is just a scree bank and like a proper ridge to climb along. So it's a good adventure. Um, that goes down the German side, this stays down the Austrian side. So we'll just see how we get on. What are you doing? I'm plastering up a very beautiful blister of mine. I'm just a on my little toe, it might be the size of my little toe. <laughs> Sad. What, what is that? You. <laughs> it's funny because there's a bit on the front that looks like your lips. <laughs> Good look. <laughs> Jeez. And it's like a moustache on top of <laughs> The journey up to 1900 metres was short but really rewarding, with great mountain views all around. We were excited about what was to come. Upon arriving, we disembarked next to the Tiwola House, a first-class mountain restaurant that proves to be a popular place throughout the winter skiing season. It sits right underneath the shadow of the Zugspitz. So up there, actually it's around there now, is Sibensi Lake, which is a super nice place that I went. I sort of walked up the ridge and around and around, which is fabulous. And now we're going to walk up to the sign, which is going to tell us where to go. All righty. Ah, Knorhote. So that's on route for us. Four hours. Zugspitz Summit is six hours. Huh. That's where we're going. Oh, the Koburger Hote. That's the one. Koburger. Yeah, that one. Koburger. Oh, yeah, and Sivensi. So you can go this way too. Cool. All the walks, Anna. All the walks. All of them. Yeah. yeah. Are you ready to do some walking? I am. Cool, let's go. It is 8.45, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2. Oh, it should be good. Good for time. Good for time. Good for time. <laughs> Highlight of the walk so far, three minutes in. A fluffy cow! <laughs> it's like a fluffy highland cow. It is like a highland cow. <laughs> oh. So cool that we're gonna go up there. I'm guessing the route heads round and up this way. Should be interesting. Oh yeah, no, it loops over the top because Knorhate is on the other top, other side. In the bowl. In the bowl. Yeah. Amazingly, we spotted an alpine salamander on the path, which can live for over 10 years. It was an awesome way to start the trail. Love me some salt in the morning. <laughs> nom nom nom. 
You're a big cow. He's a bit curious. Sorry, cow. We have a mountain to climb. <laughs> you, I get fished off by a sheep on my summit. You get fished off by a cow. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Check out the view. Just round in this little coal. <laughs> nice. Cows are like, is it lunchtime yet? <laughs> hey look, this is uh, the point to our path, hour and a half away. Here we go. Red, white, red, and red splodge via Alpina. Big network of paths spanning eight countries, long distance routes through the mountains, different color coded trails. Quite tough in places, I have to say. How do I know that? Have I done the trail? No, no, I have not. But I've walked a few stretches in the last few days and decided it is not for the faint hearted. That is the via Alpina. At first the ascent was steady, and we plodded on, surrounded on all sides by awe-inspiring rocky summits. Servus! <laughs> it really doesn't take long to get fantastic views. The climb up is uh, really enjoyable so far. It's quite busy, I guess, because Lots of folk are doing the same thing. Nice clear day today, but still, all is well. Love and life in the mountains. Gradually, the path steepened and became more rocky. Alongside were late summer wildflowers, such as harebells, thistles, and fringed gentane. Really spectacular up here already. Loving the view forwards and all around. Are you doing okay? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. How are you? I'm being burnt. Oh. Did you want a sun cream now? No, it's alright. I thought we'd stop at the jock there. Yeah. Okay, cool. It's like me. <laughs> Falling into the pond. Alrighty, we've reached this very convenient rest point. And if my map is correct, sweet. So I reckon this is that place that I come for now. It's in, it's in Thai football. Yeah, that. I don't know if that oh, is. Oh wow, look at the strata in that rock. Yeah. Man. The prevailing rock type around the Zugspitz is compact limestone, formed 210 million years ago. The layers within the Vettestein limestone can often be seen clearly on exposed rock faces such as this one. <laughs> Everyone, pole holes. <laughs> All the way. <laughs> Hikers happen, that's what. <sighs> See that uh, ridge there? There's a trail going up there. It's not ours, but it does look pretty neat up there. This is such a nice stretch, just curtained in by mountains on all sides and then the grass, so thin, the soil, very delicate because we're in the alpine zone now. You can see all the trees, the foliage is left behind. You can imagine this holds the snow quite late into the season, but it's all gone now. Won't be long till it's back, right at the end of August. I reckon three, four weeks and there'll be a little bit of snow about and then heading into the winter season. All right, cool. Knochote. One hour. Un, uh, oh, that's French. We know where from. Zugspitz. Four hours and a quarter. Oh, yes. Look at that. 
clanging of the cowbells, gnarly peaks. Oh man, this place is a little slice of heaven. I'm pretty pumped looking at some of the route ahead. Looks like it's going to be good. Really excited. How are you doing? Very good. Yeah? Yeah. Great. Quite chilly actually. Fresh. Yeah. Hi. There's a little bit of a breeze. A bit of a wind chill factor. There is a wee bit. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Let's keep moving then. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say, this is one of the busiest walks I've done so far in my time in the Alps in a week. Uh, kind of is a good confidence boost that this route must be quite doable. Either that or we've all been fooled. <laughs> Heading up, pretty exciting. Gotta watch footing. So heavily trafficked, there's almost steps worn in at the moment. Put this wire for support as well. Really nice and steady. Here comes Anna, scrambling up the mountainside. Pew pew pew! <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, <laughs> good save. Double save. Nice one. <laughs> Clipping in, not you but the camera. <laughs> How do I? <laughs> well, never know with an app. Ah, nice one. Just crossing the border. So we're hiking so far in Austria. Here we got Germany. You can uh, cross on over and carry on to the top. Mountain traffic 101. Feels a bit like Everest. Not that I've been to Everest, I have to point out. Dankeschön. Goodbye, Austria. We'll see you from the top. Let's go. So you can actually see the trail. Uh, so this is the route I took from the Rhine to Lange Hut. Hutte. It went up. Switch, 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 switch. That's the Knorr Hutte. And then it goes through what I've called the moon landscape. And it goes right round and then we cut up near the Son Alpine. So quite a way to go yet, but it's awesome being able to see across. Very, very cool. We entered the incredible lunar-like landscape of the Zugspitz Plateau, rock-strewn, vast and wild. It was a truly unique scene. Servus. Further along the trail, we pass by a small shrine, overlooking the Rheintal Valley, which I had followed during my first ascent a few days earlier. Servus. Servus. Hey. <laughs> nearly at Knorrhutte now. Uh, I have to say that was absolutely fine. <laughs> uh, I really thought this morning and from what, it, what I read that that was going to be way more technical and it's actually one of the easiest descents I've done in the whole trip. So I'll take it. The Knorrhutte is owned by the German Alpine Club and sits at 252 meters above sea level. A hut was first built here in 1855. Surrounding the hut were loads of alpine sheep, many of which were being rounded up by shepherds to be slowly moved down the mountain to the alms or meadows in the valleys. 
we figured the shepherds must be pretty fit indeed to run after hundreds of sheep in the mountains. It was entertaining to watch, but we did feel for them a little bit. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Heading up from Kanoa very busy. Uh, we stopped for a bit on a side. What did you say it was like? Like London Waterloo. London Waterloo. So busy. But we're on the move now, <laughs> pressing on to Son Alpine and the glacier. Next point of interest. So we are heading two hours to Son Alpine. Actually, took me an hour and a half the other day because then it's an hour and a half up to the Zugspitz. So, maths. But you can also take this variation if you're up for mountaineering. Basically, you go up there and along and then down. Not a buzz. Further. Let's go. This was where the other day I nearly got boshed down a mountain by a sheep. So they were all coming down here. I was hiking up here and just where those people are, I was like, hey sheep, and they nibbled my hand and then pushed me and then rammed into me. There I was hanging over the edge of the cliff with merely sheep water to keep me alive. And then it pulled me back up. It decided I was worth another few days at least. And here I am, returned to the spot to relive the memory. And in the house. <laughs> Some situations it's a... It is. It's what? <laughs> and she's off. <laughs> it wasn't too long before we really started to reap the rewards for the climb. Vast mountainous views all around us with snow-capped summits in the distance. The going was slow and the trail was actually really busy, but we persevered, making sure to have plenty of fun along the way. <laughs> it's a good walk down through here. We're approaching the sort of late snow now, snow patches. Uh, so there's a bit of a wind chill picking up as the wind blows across the glacier and into the Swan Alpine and the snows. But it's just such a cool landscape to move through. It's uh, very unique to the mountains, particularly this part of the Alps. Um, but with the rock type, the colour of the sediment within it. Anyway, steady progress. Onwards. Little bit of snow to cross over. It's gonna be pretty compact. Is it quite easy to sit? No, it's just worse. I drew up in the snow. Alright, wind's picking up. We reached the bottom of the final bit of the ascent. See here. Six feet, one and a half hours. I would allow two though, because it might be a bit bottlenecked. You can see here the path, food's backing up. So actually, at, even from the other day, people have forged a trail. Uh, it's so scree, it's really very slippy. And then you reach the crag and you start to go up the crag and basically there's a rope. Some of it's really quite steep. That bit's kind of okay though. Um, there's a very section of rate. There's a collection of ways you can go. Then you reach the peak and it's like bosh, wind. You can see over to Austria. And then you walk along the ridge. Along the ridge, a lot of people have got a clipping on with their harnesses and belays and stuff. And then you whip on up to the top. It's actually a lot steeper than it looks from down here. It's nice. I was just wondering, why are we going up there if the cable car has to be over there? Yeah, because it's, well, the route goes here and swings around. 
So the na the main trail doesn't actually go past the Son Alpine. Um, okay. But so yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's the environmental center. And this is they, they yeah. monitor weather, climate, okay, uh, snow good. levels, that oh, sort okay. of thing. Me and Anna were just talking on the way up, just looking at clouds, because you've done your bit of paragliding and I just like the clouds and the weather. <laughs> Did you know there's actually a cloud appreciation society? Can I just put that out there? Um, so we're talking about the high cirrus and the different clouds that mark the movement of a weather front coming in and then gadoosh. Now we have this strata coming in a little bit darker. We've actually got some lower lying clouds over there. So I actually don't think we should wait too long to get to the top if we want to No, view. probably not. Back on the moon. So we have decided today to get the Son Alpine. Oh, there it is. Do, 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 do. Uh, up to the top because partly our Gata ticket, Gatal, Gatrel, Gatel, Gatel ticket included that. Uh, it just means we don't have to rush. We've had a really nice, leisurely day on the mountain. It's actually just a bit of a treat. So yeah, we'll have a look around here. Getting first views of the glacier, as they proudly call it. Uh, and then we'll head on up. Such a sad sight. This whole thing would have been covered in it. Does that mean we're at 2,300? No, we must be 2,600. Oh, that's 2,300 down there. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. So, Son Alpine. Many folk come here, head up to the top, drop down. Oh, look, clouds coming up a little bit. Uh, grab a brew and then go back up. So, it's a nice way to see the mountains if you're unable to walk for any reason or it's just not your thing. Walking is fun. Walking <laughs> is fun. Yeah, but... It's bizarre. As a busher? As a spur. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when, when you get rewarded with such a view. Yeah. I mean, they're not bad, are they, really? No. I mean, it could no. be worse. Oh, let's go. Yeah. We're gonna go to the summit. Of the mountain, of the souks bit. <laughs> operator. Smooth operator. Oh, okay. From the cable car, we gained good views over the Schneeferno glacier, the largest glacier in Germany. To us, it looked tiny and very sad indeed, a clear victim of the changing climate. We were then passing the scree slope and crags that I had climbed during my first ascent. It brought back great memories. And then we pulled into the summit station. It was a very exciting moment. Where are we, Anna? On the Zugspitze. Yeah? Yeah. Did we make it? Not quite. Nearly. Nearly. Ready, steady, go. Thank you. To the summit. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Off and out onto the summit. Two thousand nine hundred and sixty-three, Anna. Oh, no. <laughs> Not bad. Check it out. Clouds swirled in. The views from the summit were sadly largely obscured by clouds, but it felt fantastic and rewarding nonetheless. We watched many folk climb to the main summit cross for a classic snap, and then had a wander through the clouds, cafes and tables to reach the Austrian side. As already mentioned, the Zugspitz marks the boundary between Austria and Germany, and so you can visit both German and Austrian platforms on the summit. So this is where you come up when you walk up from the Son Alpine, last little bit, up the metal steps. <laughs> Getting a Zugspit stamp, skittish. Yeah! 
job done. Yeah. That makes it official. Yeah. <laughs> done. Yeah. The top. Oh, it's two nine fifty here. <laughs> Yes. What's the Etsy? The Mahuga. Who's that? He's an artist. A artist. Through the clouds we could just about make out a collection of peaks. It was an atmospheric moment and we felt so grateful to be in this wonderful part of the world. Eventually it was time to go. We had reached the summit just in time to catch one of the final cable cars back down to Urwald. The car itself was pretty jammed, but the views during the descent made it really worthwhile. We stood, watching, mesmerised by the vast, incredible, natural world through which we were travelling. This was a place like no other, and we had created memories that we would treasure for a long time to come. <laughs> Cheese! <laughs> Alrighty, folks, we are back down in Erval. Well, close enough to Erval. We've got to walk back and then go find the car. Uh, but we did it. We made it up the Zugspin. Yeah. It was a good walk, huh? It was. It's really good. Was it what you expected? Um, no, I thought it was going to be harder. Same, actually. Yeah. Same. That was a very nice route, very mellow. Yeah, it was. It was a good day in the mountains today. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching our walk today. I hope you enjoyed it and are inspired to head out for your own adventures, wherever they may be. And until next time, stay very wild. Nice. See ya. <laughs> that was our best one yet. Yeah. <laughs>